Welcome. This is Tuesday evening, and this is Simply the Truth with me, Doug Harris. Thank you for joining us because you are just as important as those of us here in the studio. And with Simply the Truth, we do exactly what the title says, or seek to do exactly what the title says. Take a subject and share the truth about it as simply as possible. And the subject we're dealing with tonight is one that we get all sorts of emails and questions over and it's always something that people are wanting to know more about and it's the whole area of the occult. And uh, the set is slightly different tonight because I've got two guests, not just one. And first I want to welcome Laura, Laura Maxwell. Thank you for joining us, Laura. Thank you. As soon as you talk, they know you're not from down this part of the world. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you've been on before, you've given your testimony before, and obviously out of spiritualism, and so you are really qualified to deal with quite a bit of what we're going to talk about tonight. So thank you, thank you. for joining us. And, and then also my old mate, uh, Michael Cummings. Many of you know Michael uh, from uh, various times we've had him on in the past, and so great to have you with us, Michael very much involved in the deliverance ministry, so maybe never been fully into the occult yourself, but really understanding it and understanding what people go through. Thank you, Doug. Thanks very much. I guess one of the first questions I really would like to ask, uh, we've got all sorts of ways we could go tonight, but I, I think one of the things I really want to ask, first of all, is the, the, the whole modern occult phenomena, it, it comes at you from all sides and in all, all different ways. How concerned are you, Laura, that people are responding more to its message these days because of the way it's presented? Definitely quite concerned, um, and not just with people from any religion or no faith, but even Christians themselves. Um, as the Bible says, my people perish through lack of knowledge and even the elect will be deceived. And there's certainly more through media, internet, um, and even the actual New Age agenda itself is definitely geared to reaching all of society globally with the occult message, which is now blending, as you know, more with ancient gods um, and ancient religion so you've got a mix of not only is the occult being acceptable but it's mixing with things like um, the Egyptian god Horus, Krishna god, you know the Hindu god Buddha and these so-called previous saviours mm -hmm. and they, they do think that Jesus isn't the saviour that he's just a reincarnation of these ancient so-called saviours and it's, you see it in society a lot more now. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Michael, I think one of the things, I mean, what Laura just said there was interesting that even the elect, I mean, even Christians that have been on the road for quite some time can be deceived. And I think we feel sometimes that Satan will always come, as it were, with the, the pitchfork and, and the horns and we recognize him so easily. But that's not the way the occult is presented today, is it? No, the biggest deception Satan has brought to the world is that deception that people look at him as a as an evil force which we know is an evil force come in delivering evil and the problem with the occult is it's so uh, it, it's been so shall we say cleaned up these days there's if you look at a lot of sites on the internet there's no threat in them it's geared to help people if you get the many in the London area, I don't know about outside London, if you get local or regional papers, you see pages of adverts there. People say, you know, problems passing your exams, you're looking for a marriage, immigration problems, and you'll see a certain shake or a certain shame and there will be advertising his services. And for people who don't know Jesus, who don't know the Lord, uh, they can be drawn towards that because we all have a need. Us in Christianity look to the Lord to meet our needs, mm -hmm. but people who don't know the Lord will look in other areas, and that's where they can get deceived and lured into the occult. Mm. We're, we're certainly going to deal with that area, and of course, as we get towards the end, we're going to look at ways where people that may 
have got involved, please, no condemnation right from the beginning. If people have got involved, we're not condemning people in doing that, but we certainly would like to help to move you out from that and into something of reality tonight. So we'll be doing that as we go along. But maybe just to paint a picture and just to, to develop uh, that you, you were in spiritualism. Now, many people will look at spiritualism as being something quite harmless and something, you know, it's all right if, if she wants to go that way. Um, but you, you shared with me something very interesting the other week that you felt that the basis of spiritualism was Luciferianism. Yeah. Now, before we get on to, <laughs> to dealing with that, I guess, first of all, we've got to uh, define what do you mean by Luciferianism? Because Lucifer, obviously, in the Bible, is the one that became Satan. Yeah. Is, is that really what it is? Is Luciferianism all about Satanism and the basis of this? Um, well, I think there are obviously different kind of branches of it, and that Satanists would take it more literal than that and realize that he is evil. But the kind of a thing I was taught as a spiritualist and a New Ager was really the Luciferianism where the people don't really have a malice in believing this. Um, they feel that Lucifer is still an angel of light and that the Bible is wrong to say that he fell and became Satan. They feel that Lucifer um, was the one who made the ultimate sacrifice, not Jesus, that Lucifer descended willingly from the planet Venus um, and he came to teach us, to show us light and to awaken us to our inner divinity and that Lucifer would be the one that would bring society in the last days into light, that he would pave the way for the new world order and that he does this through spirit guides and spirits and different old cult and new age mm -hmm. and they just felt that Jesus wasn't the saviour that, that Lucifer is, is light. And so are there people, we'll come back to spiritualism just a bit, but are there people that really believe that and practice what you've just said now in, in, in Britain, around the world? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and going back to how it was relevant to spiritualism, we were taught, uh, for example, in the early 1800s, it wasn't mentioned as much um, just because people would realise that a lot of folks would be scared by it or found it controversial but in the 1870s a very very famous medium Madame Helena Blavatsky she was the, one of the first mediums to publicly admit that Lucifer is God um, and mediums have taught that since her um, she received these teachings from her so-called spirit guides that claim to be ascended masters um, and she, I mean, you can check this out online, it's not just propaganda from me, you know, her books are still available where she basically says Lucifer is God um, and yeah, they taught it to mediums and spiritualists, although it wasn't mentioned a lot to us in the spiritualist church, but we were aware of it, um, the mediums might not call themselves Luciferians, but they do agree with a lot of the Luciferian doctrine. Now, you were in spiritualism and praise God you got out of spiritualism, God delivered you, and it wasn't always that easy, as those of you who heard your, your testimony know. But if you'd have known the root of, Lucifer, uh, of spiritualism was Luciferianism, that, that this belief that Lucifer was actually God, because many spiritualists today wouldn't, would not know that. I mean, they, they believe in Jesus Christ, etc. Mm. Would that have made a difference to you getting into spiritualism? Well, it sounds funny, but it shows how easily you can be deceived because when I was told that in the beginning, um, I just believed that the mediums taught us that, and certainly this Madame Blavatsky, the famous medium, the mother of the New Age movement, when I heard she believed that, and because it was spirits that told her, and because our so-called spirit guides told us the same information. I just thought, well, these spirits are showing up, telling us this. Well, it must be true then. The Bible must be false. So in actual fact, I just tended to believe it. And, yeah. and I guess there are many like that today that, in, in actual fact, they're preaching 
a totally different gospel. So if you go, as nice as people are, and of course people in this realm are nice, but as, as nice as people are, if they're in this realm, they are. Um, preaching a different gospel, yeah. and, and they're preaching a different God, really, aren't they, from, yeah, from that definitely. point of view? Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, uh, yes. I mean, from your perspective, and you've been involved in this for, for, for quite some time in, in the whole deliverance ministry, do you, do you think some of these things have got far more enrooted in, in, uh, in, in our population, in people today, and therefore it's far harder for people to get out and far harder for people maybe not to be drawn in than, than it was in years past. Oh yes, there is a, as we said, you know, Satan turning up with a pitchfork. If we, we were, people of my age was uh, brought up to believe that, that Satan would bring evil when he was your adversary. I was brought up, even though I wasn't a Christian as a young man, that's what I believed. The trouble is today, as we said earlier, there's so much information about and there's so much self-help out there. Say this, do this. And it's funny, we're talking about Luciferianism and bringing light. I can remember a young man many years ago I took through deliverance. And he said that he uh, became demonized because of the practice of giving light. And he said he actively, when he met people, used to pass light on to them. Mm. Physically he would give them a candle or a light but the spiritual implications behind it and he believed he was doing good. I'm giving you this light so your old psyche, your old being will be energized by this light. You will see far beyond the natural and you will look into the spiritual and the supernatural and even in uh, the higher assurances of Masonic worship uh, it's Lucifer that is the good God Adonai is the wicked God mm -hmm. in, in that sort of teaching. Now, intelligent people, and you know, one of my favorite scriptures is lean not on your own understanding from Proverbs. Because when we lean on our own understanding, we can make sense out of this stuff. We can make it fit in to our personal needs and our personal aspirations. Uh, we can forget the Bible. Deuteronomy 18, as we know we've spoke about that before, makes it absolutely clear that these practices are an abomination and God warned his people not to get involved in these practices when they went into the land of Canaan. Now the land of Canaan has spread all over the world and now these practices are practiced in every nation. And because people have no real understanding of demons and what demons do, uh, because they still see Satan with the pitchfork and demons must be little goblins that come and prod you with fire and things like that, then to the intelligent mind, these things don't seem far out. They mm. seem very acceptable. Mm. That's why I say lean not on your own understanding, mm. because if you lean on your own understanding, you will be drawn into this stuff and you will be deceived. And I guess some people, maybe not all, because some people will be quite happy to say God doesn't exist, the Bible is not true. But some people will actually be dabbling, or maybe even more than dabbling, in some of these belief systems, in spiritualism, in Luciferianism, in giving light, whatever, in the New Age terminology or occult terminology. They will be in it, but feeling they're still okay with scripture, they're still okay with God in, in the wider sense. But they need to know they're not, don't they? Well, there's a, a lady I spoke to recently who was in that position. She had been 54 years in the occult. And she had been a tarot card reader, she had read palms, she had done various other things, used the Ouija board. And she believed that the gift she had, and one of the things she said to me immediately, is, Michael, pray for those gifts to go that I've attained through the occult. She believed that when somebody came to her and she gave them a word about what was happening, that she was actually doing God's will. That she saw no distinction between what she was doing and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now we know when we read Acts about the woman, the damsel, the slave girl, who had the spirit of divination. She never spoke about against God. She never spoke against Paul and the followers. She actually said, follow these men. They know the ways of God but it was pulled through the discernment he had 
from the Holy Spirit, that he was able to recognize that she actually had a spirit of divination. And there are people out there who have these spirits. They're not going to speak evil about anybody because they believe these gifts are godly gifts. And it's actually us in the church that have stifled those gifts through the spreading of the gospel. Mm. And maybe a question to both of you that comes to me here from what we're talking about. Do you think there is more danger in mixture? In, in, in other words, you've got the essence that Satan is wrong and God is right. I mean, that's you know, good and evil. But what we're getting today is a mixture, aren't we? What, what was originally termed the New Age, which isn't always called that now, but which had developed from what is termed the New Age, is very much a mixture of some things which are fairly good, humanly speaking, and some things which are not. There's a lot of danger in that, isn't there? Yeah, um, and I think it kind of reminds me of just the fact that there are some Luciferians who feel Lucifer is total light, but there are also some Luciferians that feel he's a mixture of light and dark, similar to when they claim you can use magic for either good or uh, dark purposes. Whereas, you know, there is a scripture in the Bible that does say God is light and there is no darkness in him. in him. I can't remember the, the yes, scripture. James, yes, so yeah, yeah. there is no mixture of light yes, and dark no with God. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Michael, is this something that you are seeing? I, I mean, because there, there will be certain, I mean, there will be people watching tonight that believe in God and maybe made a commitment to it, but they're involved in some of these other things as well. And it's not up to us to condemn them, but how do we begin to communicate that, that there is a mixture there and that mixture has got to be dealt with. That, that mixture has got, has, has, we've got to sort it out and know which stream, as it were, it's coming from. Where do you begin with that? Well, the Bible says in Romans, there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we have to examine is what is it to be in Christ Jesus? And we've got to give up the ways of the flesh, give up the older things because they will pass away and we become new creations and one of the first things we do as Romans 12 verse 2 I believe it says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Our mind is always the battleground, it's always the place that will be attack first and habit forming things like looking at horoscopes uh, exactly the same as alcohol exactly the same as drugs they're habit forming we've become to rely on them so they've become our gods so when times are good we can look at the gospel and say isn't God marvelous but when we come up against those times when we don't have answers and we're struggling a bit that's the time where many people who unfortunately do have one foot in darkness and I think the Bible does tell us that if we have one foot in darkness then darkness will eventually take all the light away and we will be total darkness is that's when we get or people get tempted to look in some of these things mm -hmm. well let's go to a, a me I've known Christians who have been to a medium I told you the story before and uh, I'll, I'll say it again if I may uh, about a lady whose son committed a murder and she was broken hearted because he then committed suicide shortly after he committed a murder and she wanted to know where his final resting place was so she actually told me she went to a Christian medium who was actually, she was sent to him by a local pastor. So go and see this woman, she can put your mind at rest. The lady came to me and said, it's okay, Michael. The medium saw him walking through the gates into heaven. Now, it was very difficult for me to, 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 to say anything. Uh, you know, I tried to comfort her. But as I got to know her, I did tell her, I, I think you've been deceived. Look, look what the Bible says. Look what the gospel says. And for me, it's easy for me because God's word is the ultimate word. If I sin, I'm responsible for the sins I've committed because I've sinned against God's word. When you have that confusion in your life, and these people are very, very confused, you know. They don't think they're doing evil. They don't wish to do evil. So they let themselves open to subtle manipulation by the forces of darkness. And that's what it is. It's subtle. It's the same manipulation that, that Satan said in the garden. Did God really say yeah. that? Yes. Did God really say that? Is it's, that really it's it? so, It's so subtle, isn't it? Very subtle. But, I mean, 
Uh, Laura, the, there is, I suppose, what many people would say today is the acceptable face. What, what, we're, we're using this broad term, the occult, which, mm. of course, to, to us in our thinking covers a, a whole range of things. And, and many people would agree with us that as you get down to the far end, th those things, but we shouldn't have anything to do with them, you know, worship mm. Satan and all that. Now. But, you know, up this end... It, it, it's, it's not quite quite as bad. What what do you, would you say to people that are willing to accept that message today? In other words, that they accept the message that there is some light mm -hmm. given by Lucifer, and and we can follow that way. People that are thinking of going down that road, what would you say to them? Yeah, well, basically, I would say. Um if Lucifer is light, why would he disappear at the name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, when he has appeared, even in the form masquerading as if still an angel of light, Christians challenge him at the name of Jesus and he flees. If he was light, he wouldn't flee at the name of Jesus. And I think it's important to even remind Christians of that just because now the New Age is so widespread. As I say, the, a famous medium, Alice Bailey, took on the work of Madame Blavatsky. She formed the Lucis Trust in the 1920s that was originally called the Lucifer Publishing House, but they changed the name of that. That still goes, the Lucis Trust, they've got websites, they've got radio stations, books, um, and they're aiming to, well, they have been promoting teachings through education, through movies, through the media. Um, they won't mention Lucifer a lot, but that is what the teaching's from. Um, basically, as I say, in these um, ancient religions or these different gods, mm. a mix of that and the occult. But yes, Lucifer wouldn't disappear at the name of Jesus if he was light. Um, and there's another, quite a telling quote, if I may. Yes, please do. David Spangler. David Spangler is a top medium just now and in his new age book reflections on the christ he wrote lucifer is neither good nor bad in his true essence he comes to give us the final gift of wholeness this is the luciferian initiation it is one that many people now and in the days ahead will be facing for it is an initiation into the new age and like spangler many top mediums just now admit that society will face this choice to accept Lucifer um, and they feel that Christians are blocking Lucifer's new world agenda and that Christians will be raptured by either spirit guides or killed by aliens because we are holding back the one world religion and the world, one world government that Lucifer is aiming to set up soon. I mean, I mean, so how, how is that light? <laughs> You know, <laughs> killing no, everyone there's all. no answer to that. But it is important, isn't it, that we actually consider what we believe. In, in other words, if we, if, if we are m reading some of Alice Bailey's literature, uh, personally I find it so difficult to read, I, I can't, but some people do. Mm. Um, we've got to know what we're reading, we've got to know, where we go, and, and we've got to decide what is truth and what isn't truth. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's so much in there that, that, that is so opposite to the one Jesus who said, I am truth. Now, either, therefore, um, Jesus is, is a liar, which I find also difficult. When, when you begin to, to work out that he's a re, to the reincarnation of some of these other good people, and yeah. he, he's not, the, but the whole thing becomes a mess. How do you start working out of this, what is real and what's not real? What is truth and what's not truth? Well, as I say, that's how it's very important that you do know the Bible and, and particularly read the passages in the Bible that do talk about deceptions and even the Apostle Paul's letter, for instance, to the Colossians and he was telling the Christians, watch out for false teachings that can come into, into the church, being, a, being aware of that. And I, and I think also for folks that maybe say, well, I don't believe in the Bible, well, listen to testimonies then of ex-occultists and how 
they discovered their spirit guide or their angel or whatever disappeared at the name of Jesus. You know, that kind of speaks for itself. Did, did that happen to you? Was that something that happened to you? It happened to me. Um, it happened to my mother as well. Um, I can tell you briefly about, about that. What happened to my mother? We were trying to get out of spiritualism by now because our so-called spirit guides and so-called dead relatives were beginning to attack us. Now, up until now, they had been very much for you, with you, helping you, whatever, yeah. and then they turned on you. Yeah, then they turned on us. So as we were trying to leave, it got worse. Um, and one night, my mother said it was the worst night in her life. She was attacked for hours one night. She saw, she called out for help. She called for higher ascended masters, better spirit guides, more evolved spirits to come and help her. Um, and then she saw a huge eye on the wall. So she thought that was a good sign. She thought that's the all-seeing eye coming to help her. Um, but it turned evil and she suddenly realised Horus was not a good god. She also saw a figure that looked like an angel. She believed that was Lucifer um, and he looked kind and, you know, shining bright. But as he became closer to her, she realised he was really evil. She sensed he was evil. She sensed he was trying to kill her and she realised he wasn't Lucifer. He was truly Satan mm -hmm. after all. And that was the first time she called out on Jesus Christ and then the apparitions vanished. And of course, I think what we've got to realise is these apparitions um, aren't real in the sense of humans. They, they are spiritual beings, and we read of them in places like Ephesians 6 and, uh, and other places where we have all, all of these various demonic realms, and we have to be aware that they are, they are trying to show us that they're good, when in actual fact, when we don't want to go that way, they will begin to mm. seek to harm us mm -hmm. in, in, in that way. Michael, uh, I, I think we dealt with this. Uh, you, you mentioned something earlier on about being easy and that. And I, I, I think it's always been, under, you know, the way I've looked at it is in, in, in days gone by, if we can use that term, I mean, if you wanted to get into spiritualism, you, you had to go into the darkened room and, and you had to, and, and there was almost a something, there was a sense of fear, there was a sense of something that was going to stop you going in. Today you can read all about it on the internet, you can go to theatres and watch these, these people work. It's, it's a do-it-yourself thing, very much, these days, and I think you used that phrase before. Is there a danger, a greater danger, that people are getting into things they don't understand, they don't know how to handle and are more likely to harm them than help them. Yes, you see, the thing about Lucifer and the bringing of light, we know Jesus as the light of the world. So if Lucifer is bringing light, he would, he would worship Jesus and he would work with Jesus, wouldn't he? If he's really come to bring light and come to do good, he would worship with Jesus. He wouldn't have opposed Jesus on the Mount of Temptation for a start and he wouldn't have asked Jesus to worship him for a start. So we know that that is Satan. Uh, you know, when the Gospel of Luke, when the 70 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the Spirit submit to us in thy name. Jesus makes it very clear, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So Jesus himself witnessed Satan fall to the earth. So it's not muck about, you know, Lucifer is Satan. There's no argument about that. We cannot, uh, you know, be deceived by that. The TV, the media, there's two things that people can be deceived by. They can be deceived by the charlatans. There's been programs on the TV where these mediums have made it all up. Mm -hmm. There was a famous medium caught on the most haunted program by making that something that wasn't, and they called him out, and he was exposed. So people can be deceived that way by charlatans. They can also be deceived into believing that they're going into a source of power that will take them deep into the realms of knowledge and wisdom and there will be nothing to pay for that, learning that knowledge. And as we know that the devil will always come back and he will always want his pound of flesh. He is the Shylock of the spiritual world. So he will come back and he will want it. So when people go into these things, they should understand that it may be bread and jam for a couple of weeks 
that the nasty tasting stuff is going to come sooner or later and that's going to come in the form of nightmares, it's going to come in the form of insomnia, certain sicknesses, certain diseases, fear, anxiety, maybe even mental illness and these things will come. For 15 years now I've dealt with people who have been in the occult in one form or another and that is the payback that they get. Extreme sickness, extreme mental instability, fear, marital breakdown, real, real terrible stuff will happen to them. And I would urge anyone watching, don't go there. Don't, you know, don't go there. Don't be tempted to go there. In other words, Satan doesn't play games. No, you, you, you can think that you're in control of him, but really he's in control of you. Is that always the way? Well, you see, the thing is with Satan, he's very subtle and he's very clever, and he will give you the understanding that you're in charge of a situation. A man once told me once, he was a Christian, he said to me, oh, I don't have to worry about Satan. I said, why is that? He said, I know all about his plots and plans. I can deal with him. And I actually said to this man, well, you're more clever than I. I said, because I'm learning every day about Satan. Because as the tender mercies of God are in you, I knew every morning, so is the subtleness of Satan. He, he reinvents himself all the time. When you think years ago, the occult was witchcraft. Mm. It was black or it was white. Now the occult is grey, turning a little bit, you know, whitey colour. Those boundary lines have gone now. Uh, things like Reiki. I have a horror story to tell you about a lady who had Reiki healing, who believed that was a gift from God. She believed that she saw heaven, she saw, saw the Holy Spirit descend upon her, uh, you know, during a Reiki healing. Uh, and when she got home, she realised within 48 hours that she was now demon-possessed. Mm. And, uh, you know, that cap came from Reiki healing. Now, Reiki healing is great. It's massage. It's this. I'll tell you one thing we have to be care careful of, and I would like to say this. If we've come out of the occult in one form or another, we need to have a time where we're reflecting on the Lord and we're learning and we're studying. For argument's sake, someone who's been a Reiki healer cannot come out of Reiki, be born again and then practice massage. Yes. There's be dangers. And I, I guess the point uh, which I wanted to bring out, which I think you've brought out very clearly with that illustration, is that it is the spirit behind the thing. In, in other words, any human laying their hands on another human, fine. But it is the spirit that is being transferred by that. And if the spirit in the past has been one that's not been of God, you can't suddenly switch it. That it there has to be a time of waiting, of dealing with the past to come into the future. No, absolutely true. We, when we come to the Lord, if we come from the occult, we need a time of reflection. We need to know who Jesus is and we need to serve him in truth. And we need to be humble towards the Lord and we need to surrender everything to him. We need to lay it all at the foot of the cross and cover it with the blood. We mustn't come out of one practice and believe that skills that we received in the occult can be re-harnessed for the sake of the gospel mm. and can be used, if we like, for healing or deliverance or anything else like that. I mean, the important thing here is, is the source of the power. And I think, and, and that's it. And whereas God is all powerful and all supreme, Satan is greater than man by himself. I do want to underline that. In other words, Satan is greater than just man. He's not greater than Christ in us. No. Hallelujah. But he is. And therefore, it is the source of that power. Now, uh, Laura, one of the things that, that I have heard over the years as I've talked to people in, in, in this realm is that. They feel that, for instance, uh, mediumship is a gift of the Holy Spirit, that spiritualism is Christ healing. In other words, they see absolutely no distinction between their spiritualism and their Christianity. The two things to them are the same. I remember once uh, being in Glastonbury, of course, a very famous New Age town, and we were doing some interviews. Now, I was actually asking people... Um, 
And most of them were, go were churchgoers, interestingly there. And, and, and I was asking them time and time again, is there any difference between what you see here in Glastonbury and what happens in your church on a Sunday morning? And 99.9% .9 answered, no, there's no difference whatsoever. In other words, spiritually, to them it was the same. There was healing, there was something happening, they felt the spirit, whatever it was. How do you begin to deal with that? Because we are saying there's a different spirit there. They are saying, but the end result is the same. Mm. How do we begin to cope with that when we're talking with people? Well, as you say, it's the source. Um, if, if as a Christian, um, you've come to believe in Christ, you've received the Holy Spirit, someone perhaps prays for you, you receive the gift of tongues, someone perhaps then prays for you, you receive the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy or discernment of spirits or deliverance, if that needed to be a Christian laid hands on you to receive tongues and receive those gifts, then how can you say before you were a Christian you had the gift of healing or the, the Holy Spirit gives you that gift of healing after you've got born again. So if you've had a gift before, it was a counterfeit gift and its source wasn't the Holy Spirit. And as Michael says, you can't just transfer it over. Um, more often I've heard of people that had abilities, psychic abilities, and after they get saved, they did need deliverance for those abilities to be cut. Mm -hmm. And at a later date, they received the gift of healing or whatever from the Holy Spirit. So there is a, a definite distinction. But some people don't want to lay it down, do they? I mm -hmm. mean, they, they've had the power. I've had the power of healing. I've had the power of what we would term a prophetic word, they may mm. not say that, but I've had the power of speaking into somebody and telling them something that's going yeah. to happen. And they don't want to lay that down. Where do you begin? Somebody comes like that to you, says they want to be a Christian, but it's obvious to you they don't want to lay these things down. Where do you start with them? Well, I think first and foremost, it, it's important, as Michael said, to explain following Christ there are sacrifices to be made you know there is obedience there is a life of holiness um, so you wouldn't want to mix these unclean spirits in with your new Christian life and also the fact that this is a demonic power so do you really want that demonic power about you about your presence and so it is quite important to have that dealt with and perhaps even the story of Simon the sorcerer in the book of was that the book of Acts, Acts um, he wanted to buy the gifts right. of the spirit of the apostles because he was a sorcerer he wanted more magic powers but clearly he wasn't really wanting Jesus mm. um, really he just wanted the powers and the gifts so it's knowing that do you want Christ in your life Yes. or not basically you know and what is interesting of course about that story is he's seeing the apostles healing and delivering and whatever else they were doing he's seeing all that and he's not seeing that as being anything wrong or he wants that you know so in other words uh, he, he 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 wasn't against christ but he, he just wanted the powers uh -huh. that, that were there yes, yes. and is that a problem i mean when people even as Christians and non-Christians, when we're just looking for power and not looking for giving ourselves to Christ and allowing him to do what he wants to do with us, mm -hmm. that becomes a stumbling block and a problem, doesn't it? I think it does, and I think perhaps, but I guess it's a learning curve for people and they maybe only take on as a little bit at a time and they're still processing it all, because there was a year or so ago uh, a guy on the internet, he was a shaman, I think he stayed in India, but he said he toured the whole world doing shamanic healing and what have you. And he came across my testimony, sent me a message <laughs> and actually said, would I like to join him and go around the world healing people? You know, and I was like, no. <laughs> you know, and I tried to explain, but he had only, when he'd listened to me, he'd only heard the good things I'd said about the, the healings and the miracles that mm. we've saw Christ do. And he was quite impressed with that and he didn't understand that no, the shamanic healing and healing from Christ is two different sources and can't be compatible. So, but yet, who knows where he's at now? But at that time, that's the way his thought process yes. thought processes Interesting. were. Interesting. Yeah. I, I guess we're we're getting to the cross, aren't we? Here, I, I mean, and 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 the cross of Christ is a stumbling block. 
to, to some people because it brings the end to me. So if I have been famous, if I have been not necessarily famous, but if I've had powers and I've helped people and people have appreciated me because of that, they don't want to hear that the cross brings an end to that and we've got to start with, with a new life. Has this been uh, a stumbling block, have, have you found, Michael? Have you found people that have not allowed or not willing to allow the cross of Jesus Christ in all its reality to touch their lives and change them? Well, if I can go back, you mentioned Glastonbury. Now, Glastonbury is a classic example of a crossover because Glastonbury was once a place where holiness was mm. preached, where there was a monastery there and was renowned in that part of uh, the country. Now, the New Ages and the people who go there now, and, and a lot of them are really hippies, aren't they? Right. Very similar to the stuff that went on in Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco back in the late 60s. Put where a flower people in your hair. Flower in your hair <laughs> and listen to Scott McKenzie and that sort of stuff. And when you think of it, it is the gifts. People want the gifts without the responsibility. Yes. There is a responsibility with the gifts. And you can say, yes, God may not pour these gifts upon you. You may become a Christian, you may love Jesus, you may serve Jesus, and Jesus may give you a gift that you are able to talk to people, calm them down, you know, give them kind words, and that is your anointing from the Lord. Oh, but I don't want that. I, I want to be able to heal, I want to be able to, be, to lay hands on them, you know? And people have to realize that with these gifts, there's great, great responsibility. We know that in the modern church, many men of God have fallen mm. because the gifts and the responsibility of those gifts were too great for them. Mm. And, you know, the world has lured them back into it. So with any gift from God, there's great responsibility. Glastonbury and places like that, they practice what they call gifts, but there's really no responsibility. Mm. You know, uh, there's no moral responsibility. Are they actually preaching morals? Are they actually you know, uh, lifting up marriage? Are they lifting up holiness in any way? No, it seems to be a feeling of being happy. If we feel good, then it must be good. Mm -hmm. We must be doing good because everyone's happy with it. And that is a real, real deception. Because everywhere we look, we can go out in a bright, sunny day and there's evil all around us, though the sun's shining. You know, there's, we can go and sit on the beach and it's lovely, the sea's lapping against the sands, but there's evil all around us. So even through that light, we have to have discernment that we can see what is behind that light mm. and the force behind that light. We're, we're coming towards the end of the programme and, and I do want to deal with this whole area of how we can help people. And there seems to me to be two areas that can be a problem. What's in the past and what you think about the future. Maybe we can deal with the past with you. Have, have you met people, Michael, whose problem isn't actually their problem, as it were, but yeah. it, it was in a previous generation? Oh, yeah. And if, that, if that's the case, and I think sometimes you can use that as an excuse, but if that genuinely is the case, what do you do about that? Well, if we take certain... Uh, people are in the occult, they, they say vows not only over themselves, but they say over their children and sometimes they're, they're children's children. They make offerings, they make sacrifices. These things are binding. You see, if they're not broken, the devil will hold to it. He will hold to it. So what we have to do, we have to explain to people the consequences of what's been said over them, what's been said uh, in proxy for them and we have to know that that can affect their lives spiritually and we have to break if you like I know the word is not always popular but we have to break the soul tie whether it be an occultic soul tie mm -hmm. and a uh, soul tie to spiritualism whatever it be we have to break those soul ties so these people can move on and be free in their own lives now it could be that uh, when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour, the Lord is gracious enough to do it for them. And we hope it is. I look for a day then that when we go to church and when we talk, have meetings like this, all we're doing is praising the Lord. Amen. At the moment, we're not quite there. So we have to help those who still have these things attached to them. But the word ancestral curse is generational curses. Lots of people say, that is misquoted in the Bible, quote in Deuteronomy and, and the, you know, what it says in Deuteronomy. 
But the fact is, when things have been said over you, when things have been done over you, especially blood sacrifices, mo many people I know have had blood sacrifices and offerings made on their behalf. And it needs to be broken so they can be free. Because it's always going to be a hindrance, a stumbling block. The word of the Lord says, casting down imaginations, tearing down strongholds. And these are the things that are attached to these people. And we do it lovingly and we do it spiritually. In other words, it, it's not automatic because there may be somebody that was involved in the occult in your background doesn't automatically no. cause a problem. But as you say, if there have been some serious words, some serious curses put over, then that can be binding and that does need to be dealt with. But the, the message, and let's just make it clear from what you've said, the message is this, Jesus Christ can set you free from those things, yet they do not have to be binding any longer once you allow Christ to deal with them and give your life to him. Absolutely. Man, mankind has lost many battles over the years, but God has never lost a battle. And you know, uh, Jesus Christ doesn't yield to Satan at all. He's defeated Satan on the cross. Uh, he's defeated Satan at Calvary. And when he said it's finished, in principle it is finished. People have to know it's finished. And when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the devil is defeated in their life. That's why he attacks them. If he's been used to holding them into captivity, he doesn't like it if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He wants to come back at you to try and convince you that he doesn't leave. Mm. But that's when we stand firm. Amen. In what Christ has done. Laura, um, as I said, one of the things was the past, but it's also the future. Now, many people in the occult have either an idea of reincarnation that, or some form of it's going to be all right on the night uh, anyway. Um, what message do you give to people that have some sort of, what I would call an airy-fairy hope, that maybe it's going to be okay? Mm. What message do you give to them of saying, you've got to know it's going to be all right, and how they can know it's going to be all right? Um, basically, getting right down to the nitty-gritty. If that was true, then, well, you're kind of taking your chances. If we believe what the Bible says and there is a heaven and there is a hell, then I wouldn't want to take that chance that I'm just going to be reincarnated and, and come back. Um, and even, again, to kind of emphasise the, the New Age message and that whole occult message, I've even spoke to three ex-Satanists who say they think mediums, New Agers, Luciferians are all deluded because the Satanists know fine well they get their psychic powers from Satan. That They do Kabbalah, they do meditation, the same as what New Agers do, and yet they know the powers are coming from Satan. They think mediums and others are deluded, basically. So these are guys that do know Satan, and yet they're saying they know that Jesus is the answer. They're just choosing not to, to, to follow him. And so we need to know, it's no good pinning your hope on something that might happen. We need to know, and I think in our experience, certainly the only way you can absolutely know is through what Christ has done and, and, and what he's going, going to do for you. And there is no other way of deliverance, is there? There is, there is no other answer. You, you, you can't work yourself out of this one. No. No. Definitely not. We're, we've got a few minutes left, but I, I, what I would like to do is, 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 is for both of you to pray, and then if we've got a bit more time, we'll encourage folks a little bit more. But, uh, I mean, Laura, maybe if, if you could look right into your camera and you could really pray for people, especially this whole area of salvation, that they really would come to, 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 to know Christ. And then, Michael, maybe you can pray for those that are in desperate need of deliverance, maybe you've looked, sought, tried... Uh, whatever we can uh, do that so maybe yeah thank you I really would like to appeal to you if you are into the new age or if you are a medium um, I'd like to just touch on the whole thing I know that the old cult promises mysteries and all these kind of things but in actual fact um, Colossians 2 2 says if you know Christ within Christ 
contains, he contains the full mysteries of God and the treasures of wisdom. Daniel 2 says that if you know Christ, he is the revealer of mysteries and he will reveal his heart to you if you come to know him. So we don't need to seek things from the occult, we can seek the answers for our life from Christ himself. So I would like to urge you, if this is making sense to you today, to please ask Jesus into your life today. Not only will he cleanse you from sin and save you from hell, but he is the person who will never leave you nor forsake you. Other relationships disappoint, but Christ can never disappoint, and I would urge you to do that today. Mm. Would you like to pray for people? Yes. So would you like to please pray this simple prayer after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I ask that Christ would come into my heart now and wash me clean with his blood and send me the precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And Lord God, we ask you today to take the scowls from the eyes from those who are being deceived that they will truly see. I ask for all those today, Lord, that have been affected by the occult, that are frightened, that are terrified, that are anxious and so full of fear, that they go underground, they don't see you, Lord, because all they see is the fear that surrounds them. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health as thy soul prospereth. And Lord, take them today, deliver them, heal them, set them free. Break all the chains, break all the fetters that hold them, bondage. We rebuke Satan now and we command him to leave your lives. We say he should go immediately and never return. The Bible said that all demons should go to dry, arid places and they should never return. We bind the works of darkness. We bind the spirit of witchcraft. We bind all occult spirits that are attacking you today, that are holding you captive. And we cover you all with the precious blood of the Lamb. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So be free today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of the Lamb be upon you and let you be set free forever from the snares of Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And can I say, if you have uh, prayed that prayer or if it stirred something up in you that you need more help, please make sure you contact us. You can get hold of us at info at revelationtv.com. That's on, the, um, on, on email, info at revelationtv.com. Or you can phone the office 0208 972 -1400. Uh, let us know if God's touched your life through this program. Let us know if you need uh, more help. Uh, really would love uh, to hear from you. And uh, I know Michael certainly and, and, and Laura as well. We don't cut and run. Uh, they're here for the long haul if, if people uh, need help. So please do make contact with us. Info at revelationtv.com. I've uh, got a, just a couple of minutes left, Laura. Maybe each one of you, how would you encourage people? Okay, we, we've dealt with what's wrong. We've dealt with the problems. We've dealt with the fact of what people may be uh, still suffering. How would you encourage people? I mean, maybe your own life is an encouragement from... Uh, but how would you... What would you want to say to folks? Yeah, just really that although these are days of deception, they're also you know, days of great light. And as we know, the Bible says in the last days that there will be more glory in the church, more of Christ's presence, more of his power. And we know plenty of Christians around the world prophesying that right now. Yeah, there's dark days ahead. There's more Luciferianism <laughs> ahead. But, you know, Christ's power will be stronger and brighter for mm -hmm. those of us that know him. Mm -hmm. And everyone can come to know him. Mm -hmm. And so everyone Absolutely. can come into... Everyone. In, 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 no into one's exempt from that. Amen. Michael, yeah, I mean, things are getting darker. Things are getting worse. There's more out there. Come on, it's all terrible news, isn't it? Encourage us, Michael. Well, be encouraged by the life of Jesus Christ. He overcame the devil on the Mount of Temptation, and he overcame death, and he rose on the third day. We have risen with Jesus Christ through his passion, and we will go to eternal life to be with him forever. I say to everyone in the occult there, 
you've tried the rest, now try the very best. <laughs> and we say that now. It, it, it's true, isn't it? Because uh, there is no other way, no other way. out of this. And, and really, uh, and I think for Christians too, I think the message is this. Yes, it's dark. Yes, there's a lot of occult out there. Yes, people are saying it's, you know, it's only going to get, as I say to folks, cheer up, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, but... Christ has not changed. He's still the same. And whether you're walking through the valley of darkness or you're on the mountaintop, he's there for us and he, he, he's there with us, isn't he? And why did God send his son? God sent his son so we could be saved, that we could be saved from this sort of thing and we could have new lives and we could go to eternal life with him. For God so loved the world, we all know what it says, that he sent his only begotten son. Mm. So all we have to do is believe in him. He will do the rest. Yeah. He yeah. will do the rest. Yeah. yeah. And you've proved that, haven't you? Absolutely. And you've opened your life you. and he came in and changed you. Bless you guys. Thank you so much for being with me today you, and for being with us today. Thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, may the Lord touch and change your lives and do something really special for you in freedom. See you again very soon. Bye for now.